Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, today is Friday, and I know Ali Kasi Labraka Shari Hande I feel the anointing of God's spirit so strong. Listen, it doesn't matter the situation you find yourself today. Believe me when I tell you this, it will last no further. It will last no further. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Before we go into today's broadcast, let's let's call for that daily bread. Praise God. Say with me, say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I, t- I was telling you, there is nothing, no situation you'll find yourself in today that is going to last long. Why do I say that? Because I sense the Lord releasing His light into your spirit concerning that situation. Now I'm, I'm hearing the Lord say this to you. Calm down and spend some quality time with the Lord. Not spending it complaining, but spending it inquiring of the Lord. Say, Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, it's high time this situation changes. Now, no matter what it is, be it in your health, your finances, your family, whatever it is, that you are directly involved. It is high time this changes. Because you see, all you need to do is receive light. And hear me, these lights, there is no barrier. I can see, bro, now get there. You know, <laughs> you, you, you remember Joseph. Joseph was in prison. Locked up in the dungeon, not knowing when he'll be free, trusting God every day for mercy. This same Joseph received light from God, came out of that prison because of that light he received from the Lord and became the prime minister of a foreign nation. Not only that, by the light he received, which he shared with the king, the whole economic policy of Egypt was reshaped. The king set up new laws to accommodate the light that Joseph brought to them. The king must have set up a committee of which Joseph was made the head for the whole nation. And that was how the world was saved during the season of famine. One man's light. Not a PhD holder, not a professor, a man in prison. The prison doors didn't stop the light of God from reaching Joseph. You have no excuse to remain in your condition. Believe me, you have no excuse to remain in your condition. That's your undesirable condition. You have no excuse to remain there. Don't tell me some powers of darkness are afflicting your life. The power they are exhibiting over you is your laziness from receiving light. Hear me. Don't complain again. Let this word sound in your heart. So any day you wake up and you want to complain, you will hear these words haunting your mind. I said, don't complain again. The reason you are still in that condition, in that situation, the reason it has been like that year in, year out, is simply because you have not disciplined yourself to receive light. What do you think Joseph was doing in prison? He was praying. Lord, all those visions you showed to me that I have believed, when will it come to pass? I believe these visions, Lord. When? Will it come to pass? You said, Lord, the sun and the moon will bow down to me. Now, we, 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 we see the sun and the moon, and because of what Jacob said, we thought he was talking about his father and his mother. But he was actually talking about the power that be on the earth. They will bow to you. And that, ex- that happened literally. The whole world came to Egypt for food, and they bowed to Joseph. Ah, she takum brinege there. 
I said, stop complaining. That's what I hear the Lord say to you. Stop complaining. This also is light to you. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Now hear me. You know, sometimes, because I, I see someone, you are telling yourself, I wish I can really, really pray. Listen, what kind of prayer do you want to pray but asking the Lord, Lord, what's going on? As simple as that, you haven't even done. Sometimes the devil has a way of playing tricks with people's minds. He'll tell you, you need to pray for 10 hours before things will change. No, sir. No. He said, I am a He says, my commandments are not grievous. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praying for long is good. Praying for long is important. Learning and exercising to pray for long is very important. Because, you see, men ought always to pray. But let me tell you this. God is not waiting for you to pray 10 hours before he will answer you. Nah. Most times, the reason answers are delayed is not even God. Most times, you will get to learn when you participate in prayers and grow in it. Most times, it has to do with your own distractions. Because, you see, sometimes God is answering. You look at the life of Daniel. It says, the, from the moment you set your heart, he has not even prayed. God said, from the moment you set your heart to pray, an angel was dispatched. From the moment you set your heart to pray. Now, that's not because Daniel was too special. That's actually because that's how God operates. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you did not know. What did he say? In the day of trouble, I will give you light. That's all he said. If you call upon me in the day of trouble, I will give you light. But you see, we, when we pray most times, our minds are not on the things that will, that, you know, you, you, you are just concerned about the situation changing. So you're praying for finances, for example, and all you're thinking is someone calls you and say, oh, brother, you have a job now. Praise God. Come on, think about it. There are things about your mind that may need to change before you enter into the next phase of your life. And if God does not show you the light, there is nothing you're going to do that will make situations change. Now, once in a while, the Lord will give you mercy and you have a temporary relief. It doesn't mean the problem is solved. You know the problem is solved when first and foremost, light comes concerning that thing. And I'll tell you this, the moment the light comes, the first thing the light does, it, it changes you. So if you, if you want to know if I'm, I'm permanently, have permanently dealt with this situation, is when, as regards that situation, a light from God comes to you that changes you. Because the first thing that will always change is you, incidentally. So as you focus on getting things changed, what should you look out for? Look out for the light that will come from God's word that will affect your being. It might be your health. Healing is nothing with God. But he said the light of God can come that will change your mentality about certain things that you do. And the moment that happens, you now turn from that path that brought about that sickness. And you begin to walk in a different path. Now, when you begin to walk in a different path, naturally, the healing and your health will be restored. The devil is not the problem. All the demons in your village, they are not your problem. Now, those are lies we have believed for so long. Yeah, Satan, have, Satan told us those lies. He sold them to us. And he sold them deliberately that will be kept in bondage. So he makes, it, he makes himself look so great, makes himself look so powerful. And make you feel like the sinner that can never please God. So you can never pray enough for God to hear you. Meaning you are going to perpetually continue in that situation. But brothers and sisters, that is not a word from the Lord. That is not what God said. That's not the wisdom of God. Sometimes, even preachers have not helped us. They make us feel we need to labor so much, brothers and sisters. 
God is so near to you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Why? He wants you to boldly say, the Lord is your helper, not your own strength. If I pray for 10 hours before I got something done, where as regards helping myself, then I can boast of my strength in that situation. But we know the truth. All things are done by grace. And the beautiful, the beautiful thing about grace is this. If it was extended to one, it can be extended to another. Hear me. It's time to come out of that situation you have been. It's time to come out of that situation. If you will spend time with the Lord, and this is all you're asking the Lord, Lord, I need light in this area. I need light in this area. That's what the Holy Spirit has been giving to us today. Set your mind. Here's the power of prayer. The power of prayer is where your mind dwells when you pray. Because sometimes you see someone praying and he's just repeating one thing. Now, sometimes people don't understand. He's trying to get his mind to be focused. Yeah. Someone else will know how to get his mind focused without opening his mouth to repeat such a thing or repeating the, the, the prayer. But here is where the power of prayer lies. When your mind is open to the Spirit of God. Because that is how light comes. Light penetrates the spirit into your mind. If it doesn't get to your mind, no change will come. So hear me, brothers and sisters. I, I, I hear the Lord says it's time to get out of that situation you are in. It is time. There is nothing to rebuke here. There is nothing to cast out here. All the Lord is saying to you now, if you will focus and spend time with him he will release light into your spirit and brothers and sisters that light will shine in the darkness and the darkness will not be able to comprehend it the same light that shone through joseph and this prison boy sharing economic stuff with the king with all his wise men around him that same light caused the king to believe and accept Joseph's wisdom. That same light propelled the king to make a declaration that, look, we need this guy. No one hijacked that vision. I mean, you, you, no more telling me, look, I, I wrote that proposal, and after I wrote that proposal, can you imagine that commissioner or that minister took my proposal, gave it to his crony, and they did the job, and they didn't even let me know. No more. No more. No more. It's not about them. It's about you. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. I speak into your life right now. The kind of light you are receiving from the Lord right now is this kind of light that will penetrate every darkness. I como so prakaya. Listen, by the light of God, you will prosper. By the light of God, you will get out of that situation that you've been in for so long. By the light of God, you are rising. You are rising. You are roaring like a lion by God's light. Say no to mediocrity. I speak into your life right now. Between now and the end of the year, so much light is hitting your spirit, hitting your mind. And by the light you will receive, you will make tremendous progress. No one will be able to quantify you. The story of your life is changing now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Receive it right now and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear me? Spend time with the Lord. He will give you light. That's all he does. He is light. John told us in him is life. And the life was the light of men. Jesus said, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but you shall have 
light of life. No more complain. Go receive your light. And let that light shine. Let it penetrate every darkness and wait in Jesus' name. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.